on Power Talk AM 1460 and FM 101.1, streaming worldwide on iHeartRadio. Jan Price talks to the movers and shakers in the film business. The Jan Price Show. You're listening to The Jam Price Show, and today my guest is Emmy Award-winning director, writer, producer, Drake Doremus, and we're talking about his latest film, Endings, Beginnings. Welcome to the show, Drake. Thanks for having me, Jan. I appreciate it. You're welcome. This movie is really interesting. I love the way you shot it. It was very intimate um, in the way that you shot this film and very uh, cinema uh, verte, I I guess, as I don't say it. (laughs) Sure, yeah, definitely. And so was that a conscious choice in uh, in the way you decided to film it, or is that uh, the cinematographer's choice, or both of yours? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it changes from film to film, but I feel like on this film, uh, particularly, we were really trying to make it feel as intimate as possible and to feel like not a movie, you know I mean? It's always exciting to me when, when um, you can try to kind of remove the filmmaking from the process and try to mm-hmm. just make it uh, feel like you're, you're really intimate with real people and there's real things going on and and we improvise a lot of the movies as well. So, you know, the goal is to just kind of let it evolve. And kind of the way we shoot it and the way we attack it is that way as well. Like, trying to hide the camera from the actors a lot of the time. So they don't even know where it is sometimes. They don't even oh. know, you know where they're facing and what they're doing. They're just, you know, trying to be forced to stay in the moment and not worry about performing, essentially. I love it. Because that's exactly the way it felt. It felt in, like the, exactly that what you just described. It was very, so you succeeded. <laughs> Um, very oh, much good. so. Something has succeeded out of my life. Thank God. <laughs> there you go. I'm sure other things, but you definitely succeeded <laughs> in this one because it is, it's very, uh, you felt that you felt like you were peering in on them. Like you were, mm-hmm. you know, just, you know, sitting back and, and being a part of their lives. Like you were just an auteur, you know, looking in, I guess. Um, so very interesting in the, that way. Describe the, um, the plot line. So our listeners know what we're talking about with this film. And you've got a fabulous cast. Um, I mean, Charlene oh. Woodley and uh, Sebastian Stan and uh, Jamie Dornham, um, really wonderful cast. Uh, so tell, talk a little bit. And you've, and you've actually worked with some great actors along the way. But let's talk a little bit about the plot of this film so our listeners know what we're talking sure. about. Sure. Yeah, it uh, takes place at the beginning of an ending, really. And then the movie ends at the beginning in, in many ways. So it really is about, you know, the full circle uh, concept of starting over with yourself and starting over with new people in your life souls that come in and out of your life and essentially begins with the, uh, this character Daphne who's in her late 20s who um, you know, just gets out of a, a five year relationship and then tries to start over and be alone but accidentally gets kind of sucked into this love triangle with two good friends and, and of course does not make some mistakes and there's some chaos but um, you know a lot of lessons learned along the way but it's essentially a love triangle but there's a lot more self discovery and, and um, you know spiritual uh, elements to the film uh, as well but yeah it's essentially a uh, love triangle uh, between Shailene Woodley and Jamie Dornan and Sebastian Dan and it's got a great supporting cast as well Matthew Greg Gubler is in the film Kira Sedgwick. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about it. You should be. I mean, uh, yeah, I, it was lo- lovely to see Kira Sedgwick and Wendy Malick in in the film and the you know in these smaller roles. Um, how did you attract both of them to this? Film? Well, Wendy Malick is somebody that I've always uh, adored and I think she's so talented. So she played Shailene's mom in the film, and we're really lucky to have her. I mean, we just reached out and you know Kira for a little bit. Uh, we you know met years ago and talked about maybe trying to do something together, and then this kind of seemed like the perfect opportunity. But she's kind of the voice of reason in the film in many ways. And she's just such a cool, spiritual person. And uh, it's just awesome to have her. She's great with Shailene. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I love her. I love her. She's great. So in this film, um, the uh, Shailene Woodley's um, character is... A wounded child, and um, so it, it's it's about her. What I saw about her growth, you know, and going through all of these various changes that were going on in her lives. And you're right; it's a lot of beginnings and endings, endings and beginnings. 
Um, mm-hmm. You wrote this. You co-wrote it, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, what were you when you were writing it? Um, what was your what were you trying to achieve in writing this character? Oh gosh. Uh, well, maybe to be honest, looking in the mirror a little bit and looking at the flaws and some mistakes that I've made and friends have made and things I've observed in my life and just trying to put it into a stew and just trying to do something honest, really, from my perspective and things I've learned and understood. So, um, and then bringing on Jardine like that, who's an incredible novelist. Uh, who wrote a book called Life for a couple of years ago that I was obsessed with, and she came on and really brought a lot of life you know, and, a, and, a, and a massive amount of the femininity to the piece, which we really needed. So, um, yeah, it's always just trying to be reflective, and it's kind of like every time I feel like I'm writing, it's like writing a diary entry almost in a way, where it's like, okay, well, that kind of encapsulates uh, things I was feeling and thinking at that time, and then it just kind of is out of a place in time, and then you move on and then you're a different person. But this movie really is just kind of where, where my head was at a couple of, you know, a year and a half ago when I started writing it. How long did it take you? Is it just a said you wrote a year and a half ago? How long did it take you to make this film? Oh, gosh. These things come together pretty quick just because, you know, the script is an outline. It's not a, uh, a traditional script. So this was about 70 pages and there's a lot of um, dark story in it, plot points, subtext, uh, emotional beats and scene, but there's no dialogue essentially and then through the course of rehearsal and shooting it we improvise the film so it only takes you know three 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 and a half months usually to, to do the movie. three and a half months i'm sorry you you you, you could cut out oh, sorry yeah yeah three three and a half months usually but this one took about three and a half months to write yeah that's not bad at all that's not bad at all so no, it's, long, quick. it's very quick and then how long for you to get the financing and uh to start filming the, the movie uh, semi quickly as well. I mean, I, I usually start with casting first, but trying to put those pieces together. It really makes sense for the uh, producerial element of the financing and then uh, creatively as well, and then go for it. So I kind of started putting together the cast and started working with CJ Entertainment, my producers and, and financiers, and, and then kind of went from there. But yeah, it was pretty quickly. I mean, I, I started in January of the last year, and then we were shooting in, I guess we were shooting in... Um, uh, uh, fall or, or yeah, early fall. This past fall? Uh, I think it was the year before that. Actually, my mind is scrambled in the corner. <laughs> I, can't, I can't remember what. I think it was the year before that, and then we were finishing it through spring, and then we finished it summer, and then we were at Toronto in, in September, and now it's coming out. So yeah, it was it was the year before that. It was eighteen. Two thousand eighteen is only. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> sorry. We're all, you know, we're all losing. Sense of, anything. <laughs> I know. With the, we're all quarantined, and we're all losing a sense of time. <laughs> I have no sense of there time. Is, I don't know what Fridays are, when Sundays are. I've got no clue. You wake up and go, what day is it today? <laughs> Let me think. Yeah, completely. It's yeah, time. is it okay to drink today? What time is it? When can I start drinking? <laughs> That's kind of my mental. Okay. <laughs> it's new too early to have that drink. <laughs> it's 12 on one. It's technically on the back side of the day. <laughs> it is. <laughs> then, well, speaking of that, how did, um, how is this, you know, what's going on in the movie industry, with, you know, that, again, with the coronavirus, how is, how is it affecting the release of this film? Because you say it's coming out now. Yeah. Um, how has it affected, obviously it's not going to be in movie theater. So um, was it supposed to be released in movie theaters at this time, or did you decide to move up the, um, the release of the film and going on VOD? Etc. It's kind of crazy. I mean, we were supposed to be in theaters two weeks from now, um, on May 1st, Friday, May 1st, and then we ended up pulling up the release date and doing it obviously just digitally now. So it'll be in, in uh, it'll be on iTunes, Fandango, places you can purchase the film on Friday the 17th, and then two weeks later on May 1st, it'll be rentable on different places like uh, on demand and uh, iTunes and things like that. So yeah, we had to completely change our release strategy, and I think a lot of movies have. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I think a movie like this specifically um, is kind of perfect for that in, in a way. I think, um, you know, I'm a big believer in people experiencing my films, you know, with an iPhone or on the computer or at home or however they can emotionally resonate with the film I'm down for. I mean, it's shading a bummer. I mean, it only screened in one theater one time at Toronto. I, I think it's screened four or five times, but that's the only time it'll ever be on a big screen. And it's just kind of sad in one way, but at the same time, the very few that people are going to be able to get to see the movie all over the world over the course of the next few weeks is, is, is awesome. And I'm so grateful. And, uh, you know, in, the, in these times, the fact that we have entertainment that can give people a sense of peace or comfort is really special. So I, I got a tweet last night from, uh, from a nurse that said she was so excited about the movie. She was going to be working all weekend, but on her break, she was going to be 
watching the movie over the course of the weekend and it just meant so much to me and it was like okay well maybe somebody out there a few people out there can find some sort of distraction or comfort in it and that's awesome Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, this, you know, because I mean, I'm a big believer in seeing movies in the movie theater, and I say that all the time on the show. But this film, because it is so intimate um, and the way that you filmed it, it really is, it's fine watching it on a, you know, on at, on your home television screen or as you say, wherever. I don't watch movies on iPhones. <laughs> Yeah, I try well, not to, just, maybe there's some younger people out there who are to do it, but I don't know. I know, I know. I don't. I, I just can't do it. And I, and, and even I, don't I can't do it on my computer. I, I I don't like to watch it on my computer. Like you know, I, as you know, I get screeners, and so I plug up my TV to the computer so I can watch it on the TV screen because at least yeah. you know it's a little bigger than the computer. But if I have to, I I sure. do. It. But um, but it is good that it's getting really uh, all over, and it is fun to see, it. and it will take your mind off of what's going on. It's it's a really Really beautiful story in, in so many different ways. It, it's so layered. The performances are so layered. Um, and it leads a, leaves a lot for the interpretation because of the way that mm. you did film it. And even the way that you wrote it and the fact that you said that they improvise. I think that's... Oh, uh, you get the feel that you really, as I said to you, like as a voyeur, not an auteur, a, vo- a voyeur, mm. like, where you're just looking mm. into their lives, like you're just sitting back and you know, you're watching somebody's life that you feel like, maybe I shouldn't watch. Maybe I should look away. Because uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this is so intimate. I love you that. Know? <laughs> you know? sure. um, so it's really beautifully done. Um it tell, let's talk about how the casting of this because I love all of these. Uh, I love Shailene Woodley um, and Jamie Dornan and Sebastian Stan. It was great seeing uh, Sebastian Stan in an entirely different type of role, and um, and I just I, I just love him. I hope he is in more things um, besides superhero movies. Um, so talk a little bit about that casting and because they all had to connect in this film on again many levels. What was it like for them? Did they know each other before what was your um rehearsal process like yeah. for them to all because it is very intimate in many ways i don't just i don't want to you know physically as yeah, well it's a very it's a very um intimate uh, and naked movie emotionally and physically yes for them so i think it you know it, they had to really kind of become close really fast actually and really understand their boundaries and be vulnerable and be kind of a team in a way so it, it really it kind of started with Sebastian actually I was I was casting and I couldn't kind of I, I kind of did it backwards I did the kind of supporting roles first actually and I met with Sebastian and it was kind of love at first sight for both of us I mean I think we both wanted to work together and he just it was so deep and so special and so interesting and so such a chameleon like everything he does mm-hmm. you, just, you don't really see too much of him in it he just kind of transforms in everything he does so yes. started with him and then Jamie and I had just worked together on a short film that we had done for Hugo Boss for a perfume ad, and we really got on, and I thought he was so subtle and so interesting and emotional and funny and great. And, and Shane and I had just known each other for a few years, and we just kind of always chatted and talked about maybe doing something. And then um, when this came about, it was just kind of the right role for her at the right time in her life, I think. So it just kind of went backwards. It started with Sebastian and Jamie and then Shay last, but then we kind of all got together uh Shay and, and Sebastian and I took a road trip to Big Sur. We shot the entire sequence that takes place in Big Sur first. So we took a road trip together right off the bat and just in a six hour car ride, just got to know each other really intimately and then started the rehearsal. And then so we knew that we were um, shooting. So it was just kind of a, a whirlwind. But uh, the, the, the chemistry between all three of them is really special in the film. And I think that, that it that it happened really fast uh, is a tribute to them and their ability to just throw themselves into it and, and not worry if it didn't work, but to just go for it. Well, it, it, it did work and you can definitely see the chemistry between all, all three of the main actors. If you're just tuning in, you are listening to the Jam Price Show all about movies. And today my guest is Emmy Award winning director, writer and producer Drake Doremus. And we're talking about his latest film endings beginnings and it is a fascinating film um so when uh, yeah so i saw big when I, w- I was watching it, i said oh, that looks like that's big sir i knew it was big sir and then as i said later on they you know that she mentioned she had gone to big sir and since shailene woodley has been here a couple of times filming big little lies did this feel like second home to her 
I mean, it might be, yeah. I think she knows it pretty well, actually. <laughs> Couldn't find a more beautiful place to film. Uh, no, it's, it's the best. Yeah. Was it hard to find a house to film in in Big Sur? Uh, that house actually is in Los Angeles. All the exterior locations are up there, but uh, that house is a, is a place called the Paramore Estate in uh, Silver Lake, uh, in the Silver Lake Hills, actually. Uh-huh. So, um, yeah, we kind of cheated a little bit there in the indie, indie filmmaking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but at least you got the exteriors uh, up here. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. We were there for, I think, three days. And just so around, we did a lot of class stuff and beach stuff. And uh, there's a couple of scenes to take place at gas stations and road stuff. It was, it's awesome shooting up there. It was a great way to start the movie. It really felt like we were totally on our own. Yeah. It's, I mean, again, it was a, is it, is it? Did you find it difficult to to film it here, um, or not? Uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, it was pretty. I mean, pretty effortless, really. I mean, we were such a small crew and such a small team that it felt um, it felt really intimate. So you know, we didn't have too many moving pieces. So it was it was kind of effortless, actually. We drove up and then flew back. So it was it was just an awesome start to the movie. It was the perfect way to do it. It, yeah, it really is. You know, in that sense, it's such a again beautiful area, and for, as you said, you got to, the actors got to connect, and you did too. What was the response like for the film in Toronto at the Toronto Film Festival? Uh, you know, kind of polarizing to be honest. I mean, my, my, many of my films are polarizing. They're very specific, and I think people that really, really love them, really, really love them, and I think people really hate them, really, really hate them. So it's it's kind of awesome to not ever find that apathy, really. Um, to be honest, so it's like, yeah, I agree. I agree with you. I mean, I'm, I'd much rather have that than somebody just be apathetic about what you're doing. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, it, it certainly sucks. You want, you want people to love everything you do, but at the end of the day, I think I've come to realize now after making nine of these damn things that if you, 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 you want to make something really specific, it's going to be specifically for, for a specific audience and for a specific set of emotional experiences that people have gone through. And if you kind of haven't experienced that or shy away from that or it's too much for you, you don't want to look at that and it upsets you. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I think, I think the movie is, is very polarizing and I think people love it, really love it. So it's, it's nice to, um, to say, you know, have those people see it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, and, and form their own opinion of it, obviously. Um, yeah, absolutely. And that's what's great about it. it. You know, no one's right or wrong. It's, it's, uh, exactly. It's, uh, any, any kind of art form, uh, you know, it's that way. So. It's, well, it's hard to everybody, you know, to, you know, I do movie reviews also. When we have movies again coming out in the theaters, I'll start up doing yeah. movie reviews. That's <laughs> point um, two. Right. <laughs> Hope it's sooner than that. I just read today Cinemark's <laughs> going to open July 1st, so let's hope. Let's hope. Oh, my God, uh, that'd be amazing. I know, it would be. I mean, they're saving some of the bigger movies for that, but, you know, last week, you know, Trolls broke the record for... <laughs> that and then Jamie, Jamie Dornan is in that movie, so I'm so excited for Jamie. Oh, I did not know that. Was Trolls yeah, not Jamie's one that... in the film. Jamie, Jamie voices one of the characters in the movie. Oh, wow. Well, so, well, that was great, you know, and let's hope, you know, some of these movies like yours and the movies that are coming out that, you know, they get the same, you know, get a, a good audience, a strong audience. I think, and it's I think so. I mean, it's no better time for, for digital. For, exactly. For digital. Ever in the history of that. And I feel like we've just kind of sped up the industry, really. I mean, we kind of just jumped four years ahead almost in a way with AMC closing and all these other, you know, chains closing. I mean, it's sad, but at the same time, it's like, okay, we're here. Let's embrace it as an industry and let's make sure that we continue to make great films for our audiences and just share them. So I think it's awesome. I, I do, too. And it's been interesting because when this whole thing started, you know, I wasn't hearing from publicists about, you know, anything. And I think everybody mm-hmm. just sort of st- the industry sort of stopped because I think everybody was sure, trying to figure yeah. this out and recalibrate yeah. to begin up again, you know, to start up again. And then all of a sudden, you know, I started getting all kinds of, you know, hearing from all these publicists that I work with about promoting and some really, really good movies. I mean, really good movies. Um, so, mm-hmm. it's you know, it's very exciting. There's a lot of good things coming out. So you're right. Right now, we have, we're all a captive audience and nothing better than to take our mind off what's going on than watch a really good movie and this is one of them i highly recommend everybody checking out endings and beginnings yeah i definitely do so this is coming so one of the things i'm going to ask you who who as a director who has inspired you most what other directors or anyone for that matter who's inspired you and your career oh so many so many and i've been rediscovering a lot of our films during the quarantine uh, in fact uh, which has been really inspiring and exciting. But I mean, I think growing up in high school, I'm thinking about, oh my gosh, that'd be amazing if I could do that. I think I was kind of obsessed with some, you know, well, Soderbergh's early movies, Steven Soderbergh and Lars von Trier and Alfonso Cuaron and Juan Kar Wai. You know, just growing up and thinking about performance 
actors and what a performance can be and how much it can touch you and just wanting to make, uh, you know, performance based films. And, um, you know, I was really inspired by Breaking the Waves and Traffic and things that I would see in high school and, and even like English patients, uh, and just being like, oh my God, 14 years old and wanting to make movies like that. But I don't know. It was just, um, yeah. Yeah. Just, Did you always? Uh, just, it, uh, it's interesting with Stephen Soderbergh that you mentioned. Uh, have you watched Contagion again through this? I I, I can't. <laughs> I could, <laughs> could, could muster up the energy to watch that again. I think it would, would freak me out even more. But yeah, uh, you know, it's trending and people are watching it again. And I'm like, why are people watching that again? I know. And there's another one called Pandemic. I guess it came out in the mid '90s with uh, uh, Dustin Hoffman, which I have not seen yet. But oh, I did yeah. not Out-outbreak. see Outbreak. 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 Out- Outbreak, that's the one. But there's another one, a pandemic. I guess maybe there's a series or something. On, I think, I just often just does pandemic movies now. That's all. Yeah, it it's, it's just amazing. <laughs> but I had not seen Con- Contagion. So at the beginning of all this, I did watch it. And I was like, wow, oh it's prophetic. It's prophetic. It really oh, my is. God. You, you've got to watch did it. Scared, did it freak you out? Or did you feel? No, no. <laughs> You know what? This whole thing is not freaking me out. I should say it should. Really? But... It's not? Why? Yeah. How are you feeling? I feel okay with it. I mean, I think we're, you know, we're going to be all all right. I think it's, a, again, I talk about recalibration. I think we're all going to come out this better, hopefully. I think mm-hmm. we're all, um, we're learning to do things differently, which is good. I think there are positives coming out of it. Certainly cleaner air, especially, you know, like yeah. in LA, which was where you were at. They said the air is cleaner, le- you know, less planes. Um, so, I, you know, there's lots of positives about about, about this, you know, um, but it, I think reconnecting with everybody and communicating in a different way and learning how to do things differently. And I think it's sometimes these are the things that need to happen for the world to be sometimes for the world to be on its axis. And the interesting mm. thing, obviously, about this one is it's everybody. It's not mm. anybody. It's just, and you know, just certain people. It's everybody all over the world that's experiencing the same thing at the same time. I mean, if you think about that, there's a movie right there. If you think mm. about that, um, about how it's affecting absolutely everybody and different levels of how it's affecting people, obviously. So, mm. um, so I, I always like to look at the silver lining and everything that I, you know, mm. I'm a poly. That's a beautiful way to do it. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Drake. <laughs> well, that's, that's, so, that's so interesting. We're, we're more connected than ever, but also feel more disconnected than ever. And if there's a way to kind of figure out a way to be, to be better together, that's, I guess, the goal. But it's going to be hard to do that with a with, with this president. But other... other <laughs> Okay, we'll be here either. for another hour. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, I, somebody's trying to disconnect us. Maybe we can connect somehow. But yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's it, it's an interesting. It, it is, and it's an interesting time. It, it, it truly, truly is. And um, you know, for me, nothing really has changed. I work from home anyhow. Um, the only thing that's changed mm-hmm. is now I record the shows from my home rather than going to the studio. So hopefully, the yeah, quality sure. remains the same. I think I'm going to continue to do this. <laughs> well, it's much awesome easier. And important that you're still doing this and getting the word out. And talking about film, but we just we need it, and we need it to continue. So it's awesome. Well, thank you, thank you, and we need good movies like the ones you make too. And you've as a, you've worked, you've worked with some really amazing people along the way, and have interesting films uh-huh. like Guy Pierce, who I, I I adore again, and Felicity Jones, yeah. and uh, yeah. Amy Ryan. I mean, you just mm-hmm. Nicholas Holt, really Kristen Stewart. You know, you've worked with some real amazing and uh, Danny Houston. Um, so that says a lot about you and who you are as a director to be able to attract such talented actors and actresses to your films. So uh, I look forward to seeing what you're going to do next. What are, are you working on something or is everything just on hold? Are you yeah, writing? if I'm ever allowed to make a film ever again, I would love to. Uh, <laughs> are you writing anything? Are you in the process yeah, of well, writing? I'm developing two different uh, features right now. Uh, two different things that I've never kind of done before, hopefully, um, with two different writers. So we're, thankfully, got a lot of friends who kind of had to shut down production, but thankfully, steady goes. We're still writing, developing, and, and um, hopefully when this is all over, we'll be able to go make the next thing. But um, yeah, I'm still pushing along and as inspired as ever to just go work and never take anything for granted ever again. Not that I no. did necessarily, but um, yeah, to be able to work in this industry is going to be such a different feeling from now on, and I think we're all so lucky to be able to do it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I highly recommend everybody getting uh, downloading or renting endings and beginnings. And I appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jen. Thank you so much. Stay safe. You too. You too. Thank you, Drake. If you have missed any of the Jam Price shows all about movies, you can listen to all the past shows on the iHeart Podcast Network. 
And if you have a smart TV, you can also listen to the show on your smart TV. Thank you for listening today. On Power Talk AM 1460 and FM 101.1, streaming worldwide on iHeartRadio, Jan Price talks to the movers and shakers in the film business. The Jan Price Show. 